kind of center myself or whatever it is. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Okay. So here we are today. And um, what we're going to do is uh, this thing wants to keep flapping around and that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to reposition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know. Is this going to work? I hope so. No, nope. it goes this way. Yeah, it goes that way. Okay, if top to bottom doesn't work, you go bottom to top. Okay, so let's position this in. The back of my iPad was flapping around, so that's not going to work. Okay, and so I'll we'll start this way. And I thought we'd do just a, a couple of minutes, just go through a couple of things. And, um, you know, discussion, this sort of thing is uh, kind of crucial. I just know that, for example, um, a lot of learning. I mean, the docent that kind of, you know, kind of alludes to it and says uh, there's dojo training time. And then there's coffee shop, okay? Which means, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, you actually, by hanging out, things come up. There's no real replacement for the uh, dojo training. In other words, if it's just all conversation, nothing much happens. But sometimes uh, conversation has a way of prompting or guiding you, okay? And depending, of course, on who that conversation is with. I, I know in, in Shinger, um, uh, we, we spent a lot of time with the teachers. Uh, Hikizuchi Sensei, Ano Sensei, Kojima Sensei, Inase Sensei. So there was a lot of interaction off the map. And so, you know, some of the things that we do when we're going over this is a, hopefully a chance to connect and sort of guide, okay? So uh, what we're going to do is, okay, just going to be reading. This is just what, again, scientific methods. You open and see what grabs your attention. If you have single-minded concentration throughout your body, it is known as net. And there is no transmigration. In Misogi, one returns to the very beginning. In Budo training, if you're caught up with selfish thoughts and desires, you will never progress spiritually. Who, based on selfish thoughts and desires, is a false path. Mm. Heart with pure nan results in wonderful, compassionate power, which he calls nempi kanon riki. Such concentrated power can shatter swords. It is the pure spirit of the gods with the fine energy of emptiness. Use mind power to fight your battles, okay? So, you know, this is um, the section in Secret Teachings on Takke Musu Aiki. And what's interesting right here, we've used this word before, uh, nen, and uh, it comes up enough that, you know, it's worth uh, a certain amount of deliberation, but it was something we might nen. Um, then it's oftentimes, you know, transparent kind of feeling, okay? Uh, and um, there's study and there's training, and then there's men. And study and training are refinement of, okay? One of the things right at the top of what we just read, if you have single-minded single mind concentration throughout your body, it is known as a yin. And there is no transmigration. 
you know, meaning the, where attention goes. Okay. And one of the things I was doing, which I'm not going to go into today, but specifically, I was going back to this book, which is an autobiography, autobiography of Sada Hariro. And, um, oh, you know, study the principles of IQ. It would not let him, it would not let him do the training because they thought, as a bad a baseball player, he might get hurt, which is probably, well, I don't know. You get hurt playing baseball, but, you know, if you're a baseball team, you want your star home run hitter not to get hurt doing a martial arts, so, you know. But his coach, um, his batting coach, studied Aikido. And um, a lot of what this book is, is about, I think, what Ueshiba Sensei is talking about. Okay, so if you have single mind concentration throughout your body, it is known as yin, and there is no trans migration. And he also kind of goes through a lot of this is like selfish thoughts. Uh, one thing that O talks about is he begins at some point to realize that you know he's struggling as a hitter before he kind of finds himself with his one leg and stands. And um, he just realizes he's fighting himself. But there's a tremendous amount of activity in the eye. And then what happens is, you know, when he goes to, to actually move the bat, and all of a sudden there's a hitch. <laughs> all that activity of eye produces right when he's supposed to, boom, he starts to do this. And so what his coach does is very interesting. It's like all that activity, you know, he kind of has as a drill, oh, stand on one leg. And, you know, instead of all this thought, the thought becomes like, how can I hit on one leg? And then he starts to hit. He gets success. He doesn't know why, but when he stands on one leg, he can hit. When he's got two legs, conventional style, whenever he's supposed to make his decision to swing, there's a hitch. Okay? And so um, a lot of that book O's book is really about single mind focus in through the body. Now, in that particular state, the mind, which can get very, very into eye going all over, in which case we're conflicted. You know, we have to make a single motion and then boom. But as he stood on one leg, everything came together. So he achieved. Yeah, and a lot of the book is really just understanding what exactly he's doing on one leg. He just knows that when he's on one leg, he can hit. All right. And um, when he's not, he can't. It's just as simple as that. But on the other hand, it takes him a while to kind of grow into who he is. Okay. And, and that part of it's a fascinating read. So Sensei seems to say very much the same thing. If you have single mind concentration throughout your body, it is known as men. And there's no transmigration, which I would take as I and mind kind of going all over the place. Single mind, one pointed. <laughs> Right here, right now. Not as an idea. Mind is there, but it's in a very clear state, complementing the body. Okay? And so that part of it, I thought, was fascinating right there. And then uh, the next part is interesting. It says, however, mind power alone cannot defeat another spirit. You must also capture the exact form of the attack before your eyes and not overlook the present reality. 
the circle and triangle work like a rice cake that is kneaded over and over again to become solid. Offer your beneficial thoughts to the mirror of the gods, follow the will of the divine. To cleanse your thoughts is a principle that should guide you. So, to some degree, you know, he is saying that, you know, there's a process. It's like you're taking rice and you're going to kind of turn it into a rice cake. There's a lot of this that goes on. So, you know, instead of this, you know, you're... And so the training itself, I mean, is very challenging. But the goal is, uh, as he puts it, having a single, what is it, a single mind concentration throughout your body, okay? And there's a lot of the philosophy, like what Sensei really talks about love, but love as a single mind focus through the body, so it's not just an idea. It's not just purely body, but it's consciousness that's focused and directed, okay? And so uh, we've been doing a lot of work with the Boken, and, and so I thought we, we'd kind of go back to that. And also the sense of now just keeping that focus as we're going into the staff. So I thought we'd start to do a little bit of motion. Okay, so we're going to go into the other room. The other thing is we really need to, to reshoot in Tai Chi the Terra Lady works themselves. Okay, which we'll do. And we'll, we'll go into the end sequence again for the 30 movements. Okay, so there's a lot to cover. Uh, so let's get a move on. And what I'm going to do is if we see oh, Sensei's picture in the background. Okay. So if I go this way, and I put that on solid ground. I just want to mention that uh, I do have uh, housemates, and we're sh shooting this due to the circumstances of uh, the dojo being on hiatus due to the coronavirus is shooting this in the living room of the house that I stay in. So, um, ah, okay. Um, okay. So if you have something and I have to watch out for that. So let's see. This is a very easy full body shot, but then you don't get the wide sense of it. Okay, so we're going to have to shift back and forth. But I think for the okay, yeah, let's make sure that, that is not going to get shattered. Okay. So. Now there are details like you in your hands. Right, so you're holding. See, uh, if I hold like this, I'm too tight. But if I hold kind of like this, I'm too loose. So, and this is also the feeling that you want when you are executing technique. They don't want to be too tight or too loose. It's just that area. So when you hold the sword, you are kind of practicing your basic Aikido. Okay. And Getting that sense of single mind, one point of focus. Well, there are details like the hands. And from here, let's just let the sword naturally 
And what you're doing right here, you don't want to raise to the side. You have a center line or midline. And here, shoulders are too tight. Can you relax? Keep the grip. You just sort of put this, put this into your spine. Okay. And from here, again, watching my surroundings, I'm going to let it drop to the ankles. Okay. So all the way up, all the way back, down. And as straight as you can in both directions. Now, there are a variety of different cuts, but this is a good training cut. So I'm raising, you know, it looks like I'm not raising hardly at all, but if you kind of look at this, you'll see that my left hand, lower hand on the sword, is about where my third eye is. Now, you can raise higher. And higher and or, or now here I don't want to cover my face because you know I so there's that area right there. So from here and there's that much. Now, initially, you know, I'm focusing on the details. But for example, I'm lifting the sword. Raising the sword is a little different. Notice how by just extending forward with the left hand, see, we don't begin the raising motion with a lift. Now, right about here, if I just keep doing this, I'm going to hit myself right in the face. But as a part of that raising motion, see there's a turning motion. Which feeds that. Likewise, on the way down, there is a counter turn. Not an exaggerated swinging motion of the body. And you don't want to go when you're turning, lose the sense you have a, a midline. You don't want to, that goes. And then on the way down, you don't want to, okay. Now the single-minded focus is cut. Now there's also details, so you go back and forth. And at the very end, there's a closing motion. Raise, cut, raise, cut. So it, it, there's kind of a kind of a battle with yourself because you know there are details, there are basics, but if you focus on those, which you must. You don't have the one pointed focus. And it goes the other way too. If you're one pointed focus, 
to some degree you have the details. Okay? Now the closing motion is not a tightening motion. Weight of the sword at the very end is like in our image, the safe dropping when it's attached to a very solid chain in support at the very end, boom. Or hands naturally. Naturally, right here. Oh. All right. One of the best descriptions I've ever read of that closing motion was in Mr. O's book. Um, he talks about it because he studied. Not Kendo, but he studied the art of drawing and cutting. Okay. And um, so he just said most people focus on the target, but standing through the target, there's a natural place where, boom, that happens, not that we do that. If I do that, I actually put my weight in the cut or I start to lose my center, go out there. Boom. Boom. So one point of focus. Boom. So kind of within that, the, the actual motion, there is technique, there's information you need. So, you know, see I'm dropping my weight that way. My feet are natural on me. I don't want to sit in the bottom. So that place, the actual swinging of a sword, the balancing, getting the details right, proper grip, not lifting the sword. And then the body turning right, and then on the way down. A bit of a counter turn, but, then, but not swinging side to side. Right. So let's single pointed focus through the body. And if I check me, I'm calm. To some degree, I'm at peace and I'm swinging. And we were to. Shift to. I'm not particularly meditating or anything, but I'm sitting in that one point of focus. Or whatever level of it I have. Initially, my heart's going this way because, you know, you, there's a surprising amount of exercise you get. Start to, not this way. 
If you swing for exercise, you don't get that. And if you swing for exercise, you're kind of playing the body that's thick and heavy. You don't, you don't want that. But just about here, just sitting in one point of focus. So that's a good training pattern, swing. Sit. Now you can turn that one point of focus into anything. Your attention is both broad. See, if I'm to this way, then it's too tight a to focus. Boom. But if I'm to this way, see, if I'm too big, everything gets too drifty. And kind of the outer awareness of it. And if I go this way, it's too tight. So, boom. And in a sitting, hot positions. The feeling is that you're really present in a very expansive state. You can do this with the eyes closed. You can check your breathing. But my normal eye mind is going on somewhere, but right now I'm in a state of being calm. And I'm in the moment. Here, silence is my friend. Calm is my friend. In the I mind, you introduce it to calm or silence, and it doesn't mean. But for me, one of the best ways of kind of getting here is just swinging the sword. See, one of the things Mr. O found out was standing on one leg and somebody about to throw 90 to 100 miles an hour at him. He couldn't have this I dialogue fighting himself. Selfish thoughts, fear, over anticipation. It just had to be right there. And um, so the boat can. Cut. Cut. Or be still. Cut. So if I'm too drifty, which is okay. In other words, right here, for example. I'm drifty. It's just we're just feeling the motion. But now, boom. So those are just a couple of practices that you can kind of begin to do around uh, a sense of, sense of single-minded or one-pointed focus. And, well, since there's a through the body, I don't think it just meant body this way, it meant consciousness. And the body, and how we occupy, how we feel through the body, is a very important ingredient, ingredient in our consciousness. And I and mind tend to race around out here. So as we go back more towards self, body supports that by being a bit more grounded. Right. But I can get very drifty with that. You get the idea of it. Boom. 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 So part of that is, is, is really, none of us is ever going to be on one leg and face a boom, that sort of motion. Uh, but one thing, you know, I use athletic images a lot, uh, but I'm never going to be a baseball player or an NBA basketball player. Uh, but there's a, a sense where somebody like, oh, 
was a champion. And his battle was not about him necessarily doing anything other than winning over himself. All the activity of I fighting itself where he was unified in the moment. And understanding that one-pointed focus or sense they were talking about, or Nen. And it was a journey. Uh, somebody like Stephen Curry, you know, has to pay attention where his elbows are, where his foot position is, but just that sense right there in that moment. It's one fluid response. Okay, so the actual cutting motion of the sword. Boom. Boom. See, it's two parts, but it's one point of focus. Boom. 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 And you can translate that into a, a sitting style of life. And I do that, I actually swing, I sit, or I sit, and I swing. And there are other things I do around sitting and processing, but uh, increasingly, and I've been working an awful lot on that. Okay. And we are, let's see. Anybody with a question on that cut or the single minded concentration, whatever it is that we were working on, the Nin factor? Anybody? Okay. Yeah. I have a, a question I've been wondering for some time on the grip. The grip. So, I, I have a specific question. Yes. Which is, so, my Vulcan, like every other Vulcan, has this little bit here where it connects the blade of the katana to the handle. Yeah. So there would be, on a real katana, a guard. How important is it that I keep, that I pretend there's a guard there and that this is a real katana and I keep my fingers from crossing this line in the wood? So how important is that? Yeah, if you got that notch, see, I don't have that. But, you know, li literally, see, I don't, I don't want to get in the habit of, some people do this because the Vulcan, they go like that, they slide the hand. So it makes it easier because, you know, going this way, you grip it too tight, you raise them the shoulders. But if you've got that little notch, make sure you're not sliding past it. But also don't choke up on it this way, all right? There's space between your hands, okay? Now, I, I kind of like this one, but uh, right about here, that's, I'm not here, nor am I doing this. See, Mr. O was interesting because he did study the sword, okay? But in baseball, you don't hit this way. You may move up a little bit, but, all right, so he had to translate, and uh, the primary action of the sword is up and down. In baseball, it's a horizontal, horizontal motion, okay? But if you have that little notch there, then make sure that you don't slide it past it, okay? All right, does that answer your question? Okay, <laughs> anybody else uh, with uh, a question on that stuff? There are details, okay? What is tricky is that when you're, when you're focusing on the details, you're not in one point of focus. Yeah, I have yeah, a question, the, Sensei. Yeah, sure. Uh, I like to ask about the closing. Sure. So with the closing, you know, I understand that your, your arm, it's like ringing, I think you've described this before, as ringing, you know, washcloth, for instance, but what, other than that sort of motion, what should it feel like in your body? Are you grounding? Are you lowering yourself? Like, what should that feeling be? I don't like the washcloth image at all. Oh, okay. I really don't like that, okay? In other words, I get a cloth, a wet towel, and I go like this, okay? Um, I 
Um, so you've got to kind of find uh, the, the point of it is you have to kind of find what works for you. Okay, somebody talked about the washcloth. Okay, and it's a pretty good general description. But um, for me, all right, when I was a lot younger, I used to have, have this, you know, anything that's round and rotates, whether it's a basketball or a baseball. I used to mess around and I used to try to throw various things. And so, for example, you know, you grip a baseball right this way. If you slide the fingers down a bit to one side and you throw it, it at some point, you know, a lot of like the curveball, you go this way. But if you just hold the ball and just let it slide out of your hands, it has a spin on it, which creates movement in the pitch. Okay? But you don't try to twist it, you just let it as you extend as you are fully extended in that throwing motion. <laughs> Likewise, for me, when I'm fully extended in the cutting motion, that happens. In fact, for me, what it's like is you drop something and you catch it. You drop something and you catch it. Oh, caught it. Now you're holding it, but boom. See, when I'm right here, I twist or put my weight in the cut. Now it goes like that, and then there's that little, maybe quarter inch where that happens. And it just is when I'm fully extended. <coughs> so a lot of that is your journey into finding what that closing motion is. Okay, now why in the world is that important? Well, this is sort of part, this is one of the major archetypes in Aikido. So for whatever reason, we do it because I'm sensing it, okay? So finding your way of boom is important. Now for me, right at the end, the way that O puts it, See, in baseball, it's a little different because what you're doing, he talks about the closing motion of the sword and how it's very similar to in baseball, for example, when you make contact with the ball, okay? There's a rotation. You twist this way, you don't go this way. But he said they were almost the same thing because he studied the art of drawing and cutting with the sword. Boom. Okay, and that was uh, they let you know they let him do that because he wasn't being thrown around. I mean, he could have cut himself, but he didn't. Okay, but he the way he put it was most people begin that twisting motion when there's contact with the ball. But he said you extend through the ball and then you add that twist. And you know, this is a feeling where you are extending right there and there's something there and you extend through it and then there's a natural closure. If you just swing the sword, uh, it's real difficult to get the, the actual feel of it. But for example, if somebody grabs your two hands and you do the blend, you don't go like this. When your flow and your partner's flow go that way, that's when you add the boom, right that. And so, you know, boom. If you add it too quick, see your, part, your, your energy and your partner's energy going that way create the unity of a wave. And as Nage, you are here and Uke is in the outer part of the wave. Boom. You read me nage, bump into somebody trying. Right about there. Right about there. Boom. So we see the Aikido training. It's just most of the time we get so when the second we feel weight 
of Uke, we start to operate out there. But then again, I, I get the sword and I start to make, try to do the cut out there. Now, if I put boom, boom, boom. Okay? So you've got to find your own metaphor. So I wish I could say, mine might help you and mine might absolutely throw you off. A lot of the, the standard Japanese, you do it this way or that way. Uh, I found sometimes, you know, it, it, it tends to create people who are kind of mechanical. Okay? And, and so the ability, you know, to just simply you know, to cut. Boom. Okay? Boom. Even one-handed, for example. Okay? See how the sword bounces? Right, but let's just say we use the safe. The safe is being lowered on a chain at the very bottom, boom, there's that. Boom, boom, boom. So right there, right when the chain, when the safe is at the bottom of the chain, there's the weight of the safe. Boom. And that's the, closing motion, all right? I, I could give you different visual images or different visual feel images, but you have to find something that works for you as part of the journey. And the sword itself is, you know, I mean, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go out there and carry this around. It's not that bad on the streets yet. So, you know, mm -hmm. just simply for me, you know, just to, the train, and it's uh, generally, I mean, it's about training and one pointed focus in Nen. Okay? Anybody okay. else? Okay. I, I, I wish I could answer that, but you gotta answer it for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. I do okay. have one more question okay. if no one else okay. has a question. Yeah, yeah. So um, during the fall. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, I think you've described it before as just letting the sword fall on its own. Yeah, that was really. good. That was good. Uh, rather than uh, kind of us helping it. Is that kind of a correct sort of well, feeling well, well, or description? For example, there's I'm, I, I'm swinging the sword and there's the sword. And I'm kind of going around for the ride. Boom. Now you have to have, you know, is that going to happen immediately? Probably not. You know, there are details, but the details themselves can take it over. Okay, that third cut was really good. Okay, good. Good. Okay, now not. Yeah. That one. Good. Good. See, those last two or three, you're in the one pointed focus place. Now, if you're trying to figure it out, there's motion. Okay. But after a while, it's just, okay, let me get to that place. And you get there faster because it's in body feel. Okay. Initially, there's a lot of information which must sort out. It doesn't mean you don't get more information as time goes on. But when you've got a pretty good template through body feel, the information refines. And it's not like you're, oh my gosh, all right? It refines, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm always, uh, He's had an altercation with a with an actor because the actor says, "Yeah, you're a baseball player. That's not an art." And though his contention was for him, baseball, you know, is all consuming. So as for him, it's more than just quote unquote a sport. And so he and his coach go out to a geisha bar, and there's a, a young woman who's doing a traditional geisha dance. And so she asks him about a home run, how it feels, and he's very inadequate about that. So his coach rescues him and says, well, instead of that, why don't you explain to us 
the secret of geisha dancing. And she says, well, okay, you move from big toe position to big toe position. And O immediately goes, see right here, in this position here, I'm not feeling my big toe. So, but you're feeling the big toe kind of sinking into the earth like iron a bit. And then the other big toe is being raised. It's very much like Tai Chi. Then you can raise without losing your center. If you don't have the big toe, see when second you raise the leg, you're wobbling. And so immediately O goes, yes. Because it's exactly what I feel when I'm hitting. So, you know, in some sense, motion's motion, whether you're a geisha dancer or a home run hitter, or if you're just going to swing, you see this, it's really almost the same thing. 